the scene. That's right. The reports about this started to come out around about an hour ago. So this is happening in the afternoon, a Saturday afternoon, busy afternoon in Sydney. This is one of the busiest shopping areas in the city. Now, the Westfield Shopping Centre of Bondi Junction, it covers multiple blocks, uh, multiple levels, so a huge shopping mall. On the weekends, it is absolutely packed. It's only about a five or ten minute drive to Bondi Beach, so popular with locals and popular with tourists. And as you just said, it sounds as though a very serious uh, incident is underway in Bondi at the moment. Highly unusual for something like this to happen in Australia, a country uh, that is normally relatively peaceful. As you said, we have heard of multiple stabbings and local media are now reporting that se seven people have been taken to hospital. Uh, we haven't confirmed that ourselves yet. Uh, reports also of hundreds of people being evacuated from the shopping mall, as would be expected. A great deal of panic. Uh, reports are now starting to come out on social media as well. We've heard from both the New South Wales Police and Waverley Council, that's the local council that looks after that area, saying that it's been shut down, urging people to stay away. Often on the weekends, the traffic there is, is really banked up because it is on the way to the eastern suburbs, beaches, so a major thoroughfare in the city. Uh, SWAT teams are apparently on the area as well, and the state broadcaster is reporting that there are still people trapped inside the shopping centre. We're expecting to hear an update from the police in around 10 minutes from now, but at this stage, not a great deal of information is coming out, and it's certainly a developing story. Absolutely, Nicole. And, and just looking at some of the reports online, um, witnesses talking about police and paramedics arriving quickly, they say, um, some praising them for going ab above and beyond, but everyone saying how frightening it was, how harrowing it was. And um, as you say, you, you know this shopping centre well, a very big shopping centre, but you can imagine once word gets out that there is an incident, uh, you can only imagine how scary it was for people trying to get out. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. I've been into that shopping centre on a Saturday and it is packed, uh, not only the shopping centre, but the car parks, multiple car parks, but also, you know, difficult to get in, difficult to get out. As I said, people are sort of driving children to weekend sports in that area. Uh, it's a, a, a highly populated area of the city and these reports that are coming out on social media now, you know, of people lying on the floor inside a jewellery stall, that was one report, uh, lots of panic in the area and trying to get hundreds of people out of there, trying to lock down an area like that in such a busy part of the city. You can only imagine the sheer uh, terror and chaos, as you said, once word gets around that this is taking place in Sydney. Uh, it's now later in the evening in Sydney when the evening news bulletins come out sort of 6, 7 p.m. So I'm also starting to get a lot of messages from people saying, have you heard what's going on in Sydney at the moment? So we will be hearing more as this story develops. But, you know, clearly something serious is taking place at the Westfield Shopping Centre in Bondi Junction. And, and as you say, a few details at present. The police are talking about a male being shot. They also refer to reports of stabbings. So, as you say, we will get some answers, no doubt, when that news conference happens, uh, due at about quarter two, which we will bring uh, to people. But I just wanted you to elaborate a little bit more. You say that uh, Australia, normally a very peaceful country, just how unusual is an incident like this, even though we, we don't have so many details of it at present? Well, of course, it's highly unusual, especially in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. Uh, this is a, a, a quite well-to-do area, popular with tourists and uh, with locals as well because of the, the, the number of beaches there. But no, Australia is a relatively peaceful country. It has strict controls on gun laws. This, though, does seem to have been a, a stabbing incident. That's what we're hearing at this stage, multiple stabbings. Now, as you said, we have heard that one man has been shot. Uh, we don't know yet whether that was the uh, person who carried out what appears to have been an attack. Uh, still a, a lot of information that we're waiting to hear at this stage. 
And reports, as I said, local media saying that a number of people have been taken to the hospital, so it sounds as though injuries uh, have happened. But at this stage, it's too early to say what the extent of it is, but it's, it's definitely causing a great deal of panic and chaos in the city at such a time as, you know, a very popular shopping mall, a huge shopping centre that covers multiple blocks, multiple levels, hundreds of shops in there, trying to get people out, trying to shut it down and trying to work out exactly what has happened and to get everyone to safety. Yes, that's right. And uh, Milena is here with us in, in the studio and we can still see from these pictures, these uh, latest shots of the scene, Milena, that there are still dozens of emergency services, vehicles and, and police it, present outside the building. Yes, it very much still feels like this incident is underway and the police and paramedic response still underway. We don't have too many details from the police officially still apart from a statement uh, not too long ago in which they said that they were called at about 4 p.m to this shopping center in a very busy area of sydney to reports of a stabbing i'm going to read you uh, some of that statement now in which the new south wales police said that a critical incident has commenced following the shooting of mail at bondi junction just before 4 p.m., emergency services were called to Westfield Bondi Junction following reports of multiple people stabbed. People are urged to avoid the area. Inquiries are continuing in relation to the incident, and there are no further details. But, of course, as you mentioned, we are expecting an update in the next few minutes or so. But certainly from the images coming out on social media, it paints a really concerning picture. Hundreds of people really running out in panic we've also seen some other stills em emerging on various social media outlets of people lying on the floor of this shopping center and being treated by emergency services and being treated by paramedics of course we've got to uh, reiterate here that in terms of what's been confirmed by the police well not very much but local media certainly in australia reporting several people stabbed potentially several people dead as well but for that we will have to hear from the authorities but on a saturday afternoon this shopping center would have been packed by not just people wanting to buy things but like westfields here in london it's got you know bakeries it's got cafes it's got restaurants it's a destination to go out spend your free time uh, on a saturday afternoon so it would have been packed with people and you can only imagine the sheer panic that must have spread through that huge area when there were either shots fired or these reports of stabbings. And that would have been another hazard as well. So many people trying to leave those exits at the same time, rushing, trying to get to safety or trying to get to their cars without really knowing where the danger is coming from. And we're also hearing that the SWAT teams were really combing through the streets in, in the neighborhood, trying to secure the area, what the police would have done certainly would have put the shopping centre in lockdown. We know that that's what's happened, trying to prevent anyone else coming in and perhaps telling the people who are already inside to find a place to shelter that sometimes is the safest thing to do. Of course, hard to say because we don't know exactly what it is that happened here, but certainly a really serious picture of something very serious that has unfolded very concerning social media images coming out to light at the moment of course the local authority where this shopping center is located really asking people not to go there if they can help it uh, because as you can see the whole area seems to be in lockdown there's gridlock with emergency services vehicles police response still underway underway so it's certainly not safe to go there but it does seem like no one would have expected this to happen in such a well-known and well-to-do and as Nicole was saying affluent part of Sydney so so a huge shock and certainly thoughts with anyone who may have been caught up with this and um, Nicole while we wait for that news conference where we expect a uh, more details to emerge from the police uh, that's due in about a minute's time so i may have to cut you off if we get those pictures and can cross to it but how important will it be for the police to spread information about this 
if only to get people to avoid the area. I mean, police will be keen to update the public and give them any details that they have, but presumably it, they're, they're very keen that people avoid this particular area of Bondi Junction. Nicole Johnson, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Uh, we're also getting some reports just in now from New South Wales Ambulance saying that a nine-month-old baby is among the seven people who have been stabbed in that attack. As you said, we're waiting to hear from police in the next few minutes for more information about what happened. But, of course, it's going, it would have been very difficult to get people out of that shopping centre. It does cover multiple blocks. It's possibly the biggest shopping centre in Sydney. There is another Westfield in the uh, western part of the city. But, yes, a, a really worrying situation in the city, uh, so much so that the council has also issued a statement, both the council, the, the ambulance service now, and New South Wales police, urging people to stay out of the area, uh, to get out of the area while it's locked down. And as I said earlier, that area on the weekends is incredibly busy. Uh, people are sort of ferrying children to weekend sports. They're going to the beaches. They're going from the eastern suburbs into the city and other parts. So there's a major road uh, just outside Westfield Shopping Centre. I would imagine it is absolutely packed with people trying to get home and find out what's going on. Absolutely. And as we say, we are waiting a news conference any moment now to give us an update on this situation in Sydney. We understand that the shopping centre at the centre of the incident is still in lockdown, um, which is no surprise given these latest pictures showing the dozens of emergency vehicles surrounding it. Um, we understand that there are some shoppers who had been hiding in stores uh, when this incident first occurred. Um, are continuing to exit the stores now. Uh, reports of heavily armed tactical response teams uh, moving through the centre at present. Authorities, as we've been saying, are telling people to avoid the area uh, with the streets there still filled with those emergency vehicles. And we're reading reports of eyewitnesses talking about their experiences. There are uh, people working in the, in the shops saying that they heard shots, they heard people screaming and then running. Uh, there were people who were hiding in shops, not knowing what was going on, and then they have been told to move out um, gradually out of the building, and others saying that police and paramedics arrived within minutes, um, some praising them for going above and beyond, but saying that the whole situation was very frightening and uh, using the word harrowing. They said they were cowering in the store with hundreds of other people. Um, and still, um, the details are sketchy. Uh, reports of uh, four people having been attacked and have died, but we don't have confirmation of that at present. Those are just reports at present, so we wait to hear from the police to see whether or not they have more details on that. Uh, Milena is, is here with me. Um, as we await this police update, there's still a lot of questions um, to be answered. A lot of questions. Uh, of course, people will be desperate to know if you've had a, a, someone close to you in that area, you'd really want to know what's going on if you haven't heard from them yet. And it's interesting you're saying we're hearing reports that the uh, centre, the shopping centre is still in lockdown. That makes sense. It would take the police a significant amount of time to really work through it, uh, going sort of floor by floor. I've just got a little update. I was just mm -hmm. um, going to interrupt there because um, I'm just seeing that Penny Sharp, the acting premier of the state of New South Wales, has just issued a statement saying that she's shocked at the reports of multiple casualties at Bondi Junction late this afternoon. She says, my thoughts and those of the New South Wales government are with the victims, their families and first responders at this time, as well as those who have witnessed these horrific events. Um, she goes on to say that she's receiving regular updates from the police and emergency services, as well as from the Premier's department. Um, let's also just hear from one of the eyewitnesses um, now. We can just uh, sh show you, bring this to you now. Let's, let's have a listen. <laughs> it's just like the worst thing ever. Like, who does that to people? Oh, I'm so sorry. How so did you... you... saw a guy with a machine? Yes. And then there was... I saw a woman lying on the floor in Ch Chanel, so... What did you look like? Um, I, I didn't see him properly. I was running.
but um, it's just, it was insane. It was insanity. I wasn't expecting it. What, what was going through your mind as you were trying to get out? I thought I was going to die. So an eyewitness there, clearly very shaken by what she's seen inside the shopping centre. Terribly frightening experience for everybody caught up with this. Um, and with such a big shopping centre, it would have taken some time for, for word to spread, I imagine, in Elena. Yeah, of course. And I'm just really struck by the terror in, in that eyewitness, um, in her voice, because it would have been such an unexpected thing to happen. And as you say, yes, it will take the police a while to go through this huge building, seven floors, multiple shops, making sure that the whole building is secured. And as we have seen with some reports emerging on social media, as the police and emergency services were securing the building, there were people lying on the floor that were getting treatment. We don't have clear information about how many people have been injured. We just have confirmation from the police about the one death of a man in this area. However, reports of multiple people stabbed, reports now of also multiple casualties. We are awaiting an update which will hopefully clarify the situation somewhat. We do believe that still the shopping centre is under lockdown, we can see from these latest pictures, it's completely surrounded by emergency vehicles. Police officers, we've been told, are swooping through the area, making sure it's secured. It is a very busy area, as Nicole was saying, in the middle of a major city in Sydney, a big shopping centre that would have been absolutely packed on a Saturday afternoon, really close to the beaches as well, in a very well-to-do upmarket part of Sydney and the sheer panic must have been completely unimaginable when those uh, stabbings started happening reportedly with people must have started rushing to the exit and we're hearing such distressing reports as well as Nicole was saying about a nine-month-old baby potentially being injured as well um, and you could really hear from that eyewitness the complete fear that was in her voice experiencing something like that so now we're only about a couple of hours into this incident that is not a lot of time for the police to go through this huge building and make sure it's completely secure make sure that everyone is evacuated sometimes in a situation like this the advice is to shelter in place that occasionally is the safest thing to do so you can only imagine that some people would have found a shop or a cupboard or wherever where they could hide from the impending danger and now there's a process if the threat is gone to make sure to get to everyone and make sure to ferry them out to safety out of this huge huge building but such a, a concerning situation right now um, we are now getting also Yes, there's so many reports about this nine-month-old baby being among those stabbed, which is really a, a horrendous thing to report. But if I can, I'll just remind everyone of the one official statement we've had so far from the New South Wales Police. And I'm going to read you once again what they said, that a critical incident has commenced following the shooting of mail at Bondi Junction just before 4 p.m. emergency services were called to Westfield Bondi Junction. Following reports of multiple people stabbed, people are urged to avoid the area. Inquiries are continuing in relation to the incident and there are no further details, although we are awaiting those details to hear what the current status of the situation is. And, you know, as Nicole uh, was saying, this would have been completely unexpected in this very peaceful, affluent, upmarket part of the city. But as we've learned throughout the years here in London as well, these horrible incidents, they can happen. They can strike where you least expect them. Um, now, there's multiple reports of people stabbed, the casualties, potentially deaths as well, the distressing news of a nine-month-old baby stabbed as well. While we await complete confirmation as to what has actually happened, we certainly have seen a strict a stream of images online uh, of people being treated on the floor of that shopping centre. A, a really huge, major police uh, operation, which is clearly still underway, Anna.
Yeah, so the police obviously hard at work at trying to clear the building, but also um, make sure that they know how many perpetrators may be involved here and, and, and find them. In the meantime, a little bit of information about um, the other elements of the emergency services. Um, reports here suggest that New South Wales ambulance crews have taken patients to hospitals across Sydney. Um, some details here suggest that a couple were taken to St Vincent's Hospital, uh, another couple to the Royal Prince Alfred, one to St George and one to Royal North Shore, um, as well as a paediatric patient taken to the Sydney Children's Hospital. I don't have confirmation of that, but those are reports suggesting that the New South Wales ambulance crews are taking patients to different hospitals across the city, but clearly there will be some people who, um, if they need to be treated, will be treated on site as well. Um, and all the while, we're seeing lots of reports of very shocked people emerging from this shopping centre, um, caught up in this incident, um, reporting not only what they've seen, but also how they felt. You know, very frightening scenes of people rushing to get out. And it's not clear yet whether or not the shopping centre has fully been cleared. We do understand it's in lockdown. And as we say, um, the police there in force are going through that building as we speak. Uh, we are expecting an update from police. It was due at around 10 minutes ago, but uh, we still not heard yet from police in Sydney. But we are expecting an update, which we will, of course, bring to you as soon as it happens about this incident. All police have said so far that there's a critical incident, that a male has been shot and that there are reports of multiple people being stabbed. All the very latest details coming up for you at the top of the hour. Don't go away.
Hello, you're watching Sky News Breakfast. It's nine o'clock and we begin with breaking news this morning. Police in Australia declare a critical incident with reports of shots fired and people stabbed at a shopping mall in Sydney. New South Wales police say an operation is currently underway. Hundreds were rushed out of the busy shopping centre in the city, which has now been locked down. Some people are still reportedly trapped inside the centre. Local police say a man has been shot and are urging people to avoid the area. Well, witnesses have described running for their lives. It's just like the worst thing ever. Like, who does that to people? I'm so sorry. How so did you... you... saw a guy with a machine? Yes. And then there was... I saw a woman lying on the floor in Mich Chanel, so... Um, I, I didn't see him properly, I was running, but um, it's just, it was insane, it was insanity, I wasn't expecting it. What, what was going through your mind as you were trying to get out? I thought I was going to die. As I sort of got about, I don't know, 70 metres from the other entrance up the other end, um, I saw a lady open the door, a security guard, and she was waving like this. And pretty much about five seconds after that, just behind me, about five gunshots went off. And um, as I was saying just before, it was very, it was really eerie in there because it was so, I just, there was no noise. Was just, I didn't really know what was going on. I just, I thought it was just Saturday afternoon, people had cleared out. But um, yeah, very, when I sort of reflect on it now, how eerie it was at the time because you know, you're in a shopping centre expecting to see people around talking and um, there was just sort of no noise at all and then you hear those gunshots go off. So eyewitnesses there emerging from that shopping centre a little bit earlier. Uh, Milena Veselinovic is here with me and Milena we are expecting an update from police shortly but what information do we have as we wait for that? Well, we know that a major operation is underway and we've had a statement a short while ago from the New South Wales Police. I'm going to read you that statement because that is what we know for certain for now. And they say that a critical incident has commenced following the shooting of mail at Bondi Junction. Just before 4pm, emergency services were called to Westfield Bondi Junction following reports of multiple people stabbed. People are urged to avoid the area. Inquiries are continuing in relation to the incident and there are no further details but of course there is a lot of reporting in the local media potentially four people dead we don't know that for certain right now it does seem clear that a number of people have been stabbed there have been um, pictures coming out on social media that show several people lying on the floor of this shopping center being treated by paramedics but we do know also that in people who have been injured have been transported to different hospitals in the area. We've also heard the distressing news that a nine-month-old baby seems to have been stabbed in this as well, in this incident. Uh, we're also hearing from local media as well that potentially armed police are still sweeping through this shopping centre. You can see some pictures there of people trying to... Uh, potentially get out of there, uh, the police swooping through this huge structure, seven floors, multiple shops, restaurants, cafes, uh, different units in there. So it's a huge job to go through it and make sure that there isn't a threat at the moment. Now, we know that a person has been shot dead, but we're not clear about the status of the threat at this point because local media are reporting that uh, armed police are sweeping through the rooftop car park at the moment. Again, this has not yet been confirmed. We are waiting for an update from authorities to try to get a clearer picture of what's happening. We're only about a couple of hours into this incident, which actually isn't a lot of time. And it takes a whole lot of time to secure an area this size to make sure that there isn't a threat to people, but also to locate everyone who may be sheltering in place because their shopping centre was put under lockdown when the threat emerged. So that means multiple people must have just found a safe place somewhere in the shopping centre to try to shelter. And now the challenges for the emergency services and the police 
to get to them, but also to make sure that the situation is safe, because we do not know at this point if the threat has been neutralized completely or not. We know that a person, a male, has been shot, but that, as far as we know in terms of the police statements, we are uh, expecting an update. As I mentioned, clearly injuries, because people have been transported to different hospitals, a nine-month-old baby also stabbed, so incredibly distressing incident that does seem to be still happening, a major police in operation still underway with all of those multiple emergency vehicles you can see surrounding the shopping centre. Um, let's bring in Nicole Johnson, uh, who is normally based in Australia. Um, she joins me now. Uh, Nicole, you know Sydney well. Uh, this would have been a very busy shopping centre at a very busy time of the day. It really couldn't have happened at a busier time of the day. 2, 3 p.m. in the afternoon on a Saturday, that shopping centre would have been absolutely packed, and I have been there in the past at that time. And as you just heard, it is multi-levels. It's also multi-blocks. It spans more than one block, uh, you know, stretching across a sort of really wide area, hundreds of shops and restaurants in there, multi-level car parks. So the police and the SWAT teams that are on the ground there trying to secure the area, trying to get people out and eliminate the threat, whatever that threat exactly is. We still don't really know. We're waiting to hear from the police. Well, they would have a very big task ahead of them. Uh, we've heard the reports of how chaotic and terrifying it was for people trying to get out of there. Uh, we just heard from two people at the beginning of this hour, just the sheer panic, you know, clearly still in a great deal of shock. Obviously, I'm getting messages from people in Sydney, people talking about what's happening. It's now reaching the evening in Sydney and in across Australia when people are turning into the evening news bulletins, watching what's happening and what's unfolding there. We are waiting to hear from New South Wales Police. There has been a short statement from New South Wales Ambulance. They have said that a number of people were stabbed, including a nine-month-old, and those people, it seems to have been seven people stabbed that we know of, have been sent to multiple hospitals across the city. There was also a short statement uh, from uh, Waverley Council. That's the council for Bondi, Bondi Junction and Bondi Beach in control of that area. They're now waiting to hear what the police have to say, but basically telling people to stay out of the area, uh, to get away. It is a very busy area on a weekend, not only because of the shopping centre. Uh, Bondi Junction is a densely populated area with big apartment buildings. It's close to Bondi Beach, Coogee, you know, these iconic Sydney sites that are popular not only with locals but also with tourists. So you get a huge amount of traffic on the weekend, almost to gridlock often, going from the beaches into the city, into the western suburbs, sort of crisscrossing that area to in enjoy the sort of stunning views and beaches that you get along there. But clearly a terrifying afternoon has unfolded in Sydney. I, I just read one report from a sound engineer who was inside the shopping mall when this took place. He said that someone was able to lead them uh, to a secure area. I, I don't know at this stage whether that was a, a shop assistant or police. So there will be all sorts of stories coming out because hundreds of people have clearly been, you know, uh, stuck in the sort of horror of what's been taking place at Bondi Junction. Indeed. Thanks, Nicole. And yes, I'm just reading the Sydney Morning Herald is reporting that the Australian Federal Police have briefed the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, a short time ago in Canberra, uh, where he derived on a scheduled flight after business in, in Sydney today. Um, so, Milena, a lot of reports that we're seeing from people who are inside that shopping centre, uh, a really horrible scene for many people and, and a terrifying experience. Yeah, absolutely. And some people telling local media in Australia how what they did when they first heard the reports of the stabbing. One man telling ABC News Australia that he was in a changing room of a of shop. He had two shots, uh, didn't know what was going on at first. And then he, a person, a shop assistant at the store said, you know, we have to, you know, we have to get in, lock the store from the inside. And then there was a fire alarm. So it does paint a picture of, of complete panic there. But this particular man, 
managed to get out through the back door and he and the people who were in that store got out to the street through the fire doors now but that just paints a picture of the whole situation that the police are dealing with right now because this is one man in one store and there's upwards of 100 stores in that huge shopping center so there could still be people sheltering in, in in locked stores and i think one of the most important things that we still don't know is if the threat has been neutralized or is the police now dealing with trying to get the people out while at the same time facing a threat that's something that's not clear at this point and we are awaiting update from authorities to try to find out more about it but certainly what it is that we are hearing are the terrifying eyewitness accounts of people hearing the shots hearing about the stabbings and then just really rushing out and that must have been such a, a horrible situation to be in because this packed shopping center with hundreds and hundreds of people all trying to get out at the same time fleeing from a threat that they may not have seen at all and perhaps separated from their loved ones we've also heard from local media that there are people outside in the street who got separated from the people their loved ones that they were in in the store with now trying to find out what their fate is trying to find out what's happening so all in a very concerning situation still and just to say that the Prime Minister of Australia has now posted on X or Twitter, if you still call it that, um, Anthony Albanese has said, I've been briefed by the AFP on the devastating events at Bondi Junction. Tragically, multiple casualties have been reported and the first thoughts of all Australians are with those affected and their loved ones. He goes on to say, our hearts go out to those injured and we offer our thanks to those caring for them as well as our brave police and first responders. Um, so Anthony Albanese, the Prime Minister of Australia, acknowledging that he's been briefed on what he describes as the devastating events at Bondi Junction um, this afternoon, their time. Uh, he describes multiple casualties. He says that multiple casualties have been reported um, and he sends his thoughts to all those affected and their loved ones, he said. Our hearts go out to those injured and we offer our thanks to those caring for them as well as our brave police and first responders. So that's the response of the Prime Minister of Australia. We were expecting a news conference from the police around half an hour ago, so it is running late, but we are still expecting to get an update from police in Sydney shortly. Just as soon as we get that news conference, we will bring it to you live. In the meantime, though, before we go back to Sydney, let me just fill you in on some of the other day's other news now. And the US says it's moving additional assets to the Middle East to increase protection for US forces, describing the threat of an imminent attack from Iran on Israel as real and viable. Well, let's uh, cross to our international correspondent, Alex Rossi, who joins us now from Israel. Um, so, Alex Rossi, a lot of talk...
Tony Cook is my name. I am Assistant Commissioner, Commander of Central Metropolitan Region. Just let me know when you're right for me to go. And am I right here? Thank you. We're good? Thank you. Uh, about 10 past three this afternoon, a male walked into West, Westfield at Bondi Junction. He left the centre very shortly after and returned about 20 past three. As he moved through the centre, he engaged with about nine people. It is clear that during that engagement, he caused harm to those people, we believe, by stabbing them with a weapon he was carrying. Very clearly, a range of reports were made of the incident. Police attended promptly. A single unit officer, inspector of police, was nearby, attended. Uh, went into the centre, directed by a range of people. She confronted the offender who had moved by this stage to level five. As she continued to walk quickly behind him to catch up with him, he turned, faced her, raised a knife. She discharged a firearm and that person is now deceased. I'm advised that there are five victims who are now deceased as a result of the actions of this offender. Uh, there are more than several other people who have been conveyed to hospital. A number of those are in serious and or critical conditions at this stage, and I do not have further information in relation to um, descriptions of those people. I know one of them is a small child as is the case in, in these incidents. Uh, a critical incident has been declared uh, and investigations in relation to the matter uh, have commenced and are continuing uh, both at the scene and a number of uh, hospitals uh, in the nearby area. Uh, from preliminary inquiries, it would appear that this person has acted alone. I am content that there is no continuing threat. Uh, police, as I've said, have commenced investigations into the matter, which will continue through the evening. As I have said, I do not have details of victims who have been um, killed by this individual, nor those who have been conveyed to hospital for treatment, so I cannot provide you further information in relation to them, only to say that very clearly our hearts go out uh, to all of them uh, as they do to anyone touched by this terrible incident this afternoon. I do not have information in relation to the offender. I do not know at this stage who he is. You would, be, uh, you would understand this is quite raw uh, inquiries are very new and we are continuing to make attempts to identify the offender in this matter. Uh, that is it for the moment in terms of information that I have for you. Brent from New South Wales Ambulance. Thank you, Tony. Uh, 
Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, shortly after three o'clock uh, today, New South Wales Ambulance received multiple triple zero calls for uh, persons stabbed within Westfield Bondi Junction. Uh, we've responded a total of 40 uh, resources to the scene who remain on scene uh, still. Uh, that included a total of four medical teams. Uh, New South Wales Ambulance uh, assessed and transported uh, eight, uh, eight patients uh, to various uh, facilities, hospital facilities uh, across Sydney uh, and assessed uh, a total of six patients uh, who have been deemed deceased on scene. Thank you. Questions? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. There's nothing that we are aware of at the scene that would indicate any motive or any ideology. So, so are you ruling out terrorism? We're not ruling anything out. You said he went into the centre, went away and came back. Yes. What went on there? Do you know where he went? We do not know. What I do know is that he did enter the centre at 3 o'clock. He left for a short period, returned at 3.20. And was what he... is that weapon when it's nothing? A knife of some description. I don't have those particulars. What's was the this... period of time between when the attacks were first reported and when the situation was brought up? This all happened very, very quickly. The officer was in the near vicinity, attended on her own, was guided to the location of the offender by people who were in the centre and she took the actions that she did, saving a range of people's lives. Did I hear you correctly before you said she was an inspector? An inspector, that's right. So a very senior police officer. A senior police officer. And how was she now? Alone? She was on her own. Yeah. And how long between when she arrived on scene did she have that knife? She engaged immediately on her arrival to the scene. Would you say that she had shouts anything? Well, I don't have any indication of any motivation coming from the scene at all. You must appreciate uh, things are very, very raw at this stage, and we are in the very early stages of investigations. Tony, we, heard, we know there's one baby that uh, has been stabbed. Of the five dead, all the others injured, do you know if the remainder are adults or are there any other children? Well, I don't have that detail at the moment, I'm sorry. Have you ever seen anything like this in your Oh, this is a really difficult circumstance. Uh, no. It's a very big crime scene here. What's the police investigation going to be like over the next couple of days? Lengthy. Lengthy and precise. There were reports of people still hiding in stores. What's the process now in terms of checking? Oh, we, are, we are working through the crime scene to retain control, and you would understand that. You know, first and foremost, this is about dealing with this terrible situation, making sure that all people are safe, and then working through and returning to normalcy. How do you know that he was in the centre and came back? Is that from CCTV or did he interact with them? No, from C monitoring of CCTV. Ladies and gents, oh, I'm sorry, it's really difficult at this very early stage to give more information. I'll be briefing our executive uh, shortly, and I understand that there will be uh, further briefings later. And then how many witnesses have jumped in and tried to assist some of the victims? What do you have to say to some of those people who, who tried to help? Well, I'm not sure of the detail, but there are obviously people who become uh, very brave in circumstances. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Just tell us about terrorism. That would be Thank, Thank you very much. And we can't stay yet. It's so early. So, Assistant Commissioner Anthony Cook there giving an update on the incident at Westfield Shopping Centre in Bondi Junction in Sydney this afternoon. He said he understood that five people had died in that incident and he said more than several were taken to hospital in a serious or critical condition uh, with New South Wales Ambulance uh, talking about eight patients taken to various hospital facilities. He said that a senior police officer had confronted the offender inside the shopping centre. He said she walked up behind him, he raised the knife, she used her firearm and that the attacker was dead. He also said that he didn't believe that there was more than one offender in this incident and there was nothing at the present to indicate what the motive was and they were trying now to identify the offender. Uh, let's just bring in um, Nicole Johnson who was listening in to that news conference there. Uh, so the police are giving an update, talking about it being incredibly difficult circumstances and announcing five victims in this horrible incident. Nicole. That's right. That's the most significant news to have come out of that 
a press conference. We have been waiting to hear what the death toll was. There were reports earlier that it was four, but the police have confirmed five people have been killed. Uh, interesting to hear how the attacker was finally killed himself by a female police officer. Uh, we heard also how he had attempted to engage around nine people. We know that multiple people were stabbed before he was eventually killed by the police. They have been taken to different hospitals across Sydney. Uh, information also, well, we know that the attacker is dead. Uh, five victims have been killed. Australian police have also said that they believe that he acted alone. Earlier, there had been some reports that the police were looking for a second person, but it now appears to have been confirmed by the police that one person involved. Uh, we know that the New South Wales Police, Federal Police and SWAT teams were quickly on the scene. We've seen those dramatic pictures, really, of police combing the streets, uh, the small streets around that massive shopping centre. You can only imagine just how packed it would have been on a Saturday afternoon when people are off from work and off from school. A major shopping hub in Sydney, a short distance from the eastern beaches, Bondi Beach, and about a 10 minute drive into the center of city. So it, into the center of the city. So it is a big thoroughfare. We heard from a couple of people, a couple of witnesses earlier on, and you could hear the sheer sort of shock and panic in their voices. They had been inside the shopping center. Some people had heard shots. Uh, other people reported that they had been lying on the floor while all of this was taking place, while the police were combing the area. Also reports from people saying that they had been taken into secure parts of the shopping mall while all of this was taking place. But, you know, in, an incredible uh, situation to have unfolded in Sydney on a Saturday afternoon, something that is incredibly rare in the country and unexpected. Now it's approaching evening in Sydney now. Many people will be turning into the evening news bulletins across the country. All sorts of messages have been, you know, flying around from me and to, to different people trying to find out what's going on, were people there when it happened. But on an afternoon like that, there would have been thousands of people in that shopping centre. It covers multiple blocks, uh, multiple layers of car parking as well. So the effort it would have taken to comb that area, to get it locked down and to get everybody to safety would have been significant. Absolutely. Uh, Nicole, thank you. Um, let's bring in Milena, who was also listening to that news conference from the police. Some significant information coming out of that, Milena. Yes, now we have finally heard from the police that sadly five people have lost their lives. Several more are now injured in hospital, some of them in a critical condition. We also know from the police that a nine-month-old baby is in the hospital as well. And more details emerging about this attacker the police saying that he entered the shopping center at 10 past 3 p.m. in the afternoon, that he left the center shortly after and then returned at 20 past 3 when he started, as the police said, engaging with nine people. And by that, they meant causing them harm and starting what turned out to be a, a killing spree that killed five people. We also know that a lone police officer responded immediately to this threat, a female senior police officer who followed this assailant came up to him, he raised a knife and she shot him. We have what we believe is the latest picture of this assailant inside this shopping center. As you can see there, trying to approach people wearing what seems like a jersey on an escalator here, there seems to be a man trying to fend him off with some sort of a metal pole. You can see that holding some sort of a blade in his hand in what must have been such a terrifying ordeal. Now, the police are saying they don't know who he is at the moment. They're trying to identify him. The police officer who was giving the press conference was asked if they knew about the motive. And he said that at this point, there was nothing on scene to indicate any type of a motive or an ideology. He was also asked if this could be a terror attack. 
to which he said they're not ruling anything out at this point, but it is simply too soon to say. And these images showing what we believe is the assailant inside this shopping center, really showing them, showing him coming up to people, starting what turned out to be a deathly spree before he was confronted by a lone female police officer and shot dead. So he is the person that we learned about in that New South Wales police station a couple of hours ago where they said that they had shot a man inside the Bondi, um, sorry, the, the Westfield Centre. Now we do know, obviously, he's been shot and five people stabbed, multi multiple people in hospital in various degrees of critical condition, a nine-month-old baby also stabbed and being treated in hospital as well. We've also heard from the New South Wales Ambulance Service who told us, who told the journalists they were called shortly after 3 p.m. receiving multiple calls. They've sent 14 resources on scene. They're still on scene, they say, four teams and transporting people to various uh, hospitals in what these videos certainly show must have been a terrifying ordeal for the people who were stuck inside this shopping center with an assailant with a blade who eventually did take the life of five people there. Yeah, an appalling series of events um, on a Saturday afternoon in Sydney. Um, Anthony Cook, uh, Assistant Commissioner of the Police, uh, said from preliminary inquiries, it would appear that this person has acted alone I am content that there's no continuing threat. If we get more updates on this story, we'll bring them to you.
Hello, welcome back. A reminder of our breaking news this morning. And police in Sydney say that five people have been killed during an attack inside a city shopping centre. Hundreds of people were told to leave Westfield Bondi Junction after reports of multiple stabbings. Police have confirmed that the attacker is now dead and they say they think he was acting alone. Well, witnesses have described running for their lives. One woman feared for her life. What, what was going through your mind as you were trying to get out? I thought I was going to die. More on that story, of course, if any more developments come to us from Sydney. But let's turn to other news now. And uh, the Grand National is at four o'clock this afternoon. The course has been changed to make it safer for horses. And security has also been taken very seriously after protests earlier. Well, uh, Rob Harris is at Aintree for us this morning. So, Rob, a lot of people see this as a really important moment in the racing calendar. But there are always concerns about uh, the safety of the horses. Yes, uh, 80,000 people expected here today. A focus on the welfare of the horses. We had two deaths here yesterday. They fell during races and were put to death. That's despite changes to the course introduced in the wake of an outcry by animal welfare activists last year when there were uh, the four deaths at the course then. So there will be a focus on that here at the Grand National today. There have been changes to the course in an attempt to make it safer. Of course, also a security focus here after last year animal welfare activists did manage to invade the course and delayed the start for 15 minutes and hearing from police this week they have an operation in place that's quite notable they said they've got officers from uh, operation um, survey today is that is part of a tactic to disrupt potential criminal activity including terrorism they do say there will be uniformed and plain clothed of officers around the site and saying that will be a reassuring presence of course security always a big
Hundreds of people were told to, we to leave Westfield Bondi Junction after reports of multiple stabbings. Police have confirmed that the attacker is now dead and was acting alone. There are five victims who are now deceased as a result of the actions of this offender. Uh, there are more than several other people who have been conveyed to hospital. A number of those are in serious and or critical conditions at this stage and I do not have further information in relation to um, descriptions of those people. I know one of them is a small child. Well, witnesses have described the scenes inside the shopping centre. So I saw the yellow, uh, blinded copper, so I, so I saw her and I followed her all the way upstairs, up near there, and I followed her. And then I saw other people coming this way, he's coming this way. I said, no, I'm going to follow her. So I followed her. And just as we got to around the, around the corner, because I saw them coming, just as we were coming around the corner, there he was. He just came in and just started floating towards us. And all I heard was put it down. And then um, she shot him. But we were not in fact, She didn't shoot him. Well, uh, he would have kept going. He was on the rampage. He was on the bloody rampage. And then, then she walked over and gave him CPR. Then was giving him CPR. So, 
and it had a nice big blade on him, so she chucked the knife away. And, yeah. um, all of a sudden, we heard the screaming of kids, you know, everyone outside. I turned my face and I saw a guy um, with the outfit of... Uh, Green, green color yeah. uh, with the yellow, like a sport outfit, with a massive yes. knife on hand. And then I saw a dead body next to um, cotton on, and there was blood around that body. And there was another body, like a few meters after that dead body. And then um, I looked at, again to that guy, and he was just returning, coming towards to Lulu. That way we scared the most, and I was just screaming at my partner that, like, please come, like, you know, find a place, a change room, just to lock ourselves. And then finally the police arrived, and we felt, like, safe, and they shut the Lulu Lemon's door. That way we felt, like, you know, safer to stay there. Well, let's bring in Milena Veselinovic. As we look at these pictures uh, that uh, we understand to be the attacker uh, ahead of it, him being shot dead by a female police officer who was at the scene, uh, Milena Veselinovic is, is here with me. Uh, and the eyewitnesses there really describing the horror of this afternoon in Sydney. Indeed, one eyewitness that we heard there seems to have seen the moment that this lone female police officer confronted the attacker, the alleged attacker that we can see in these videos. She followed him, uh, as we now know from witness accounts and police accounts, she followed him. He was holding a knife. Uh, she confronted him. He raised a knife at her, which is when she shot him dead. And we've heard from witness reports that is when she also tried to give him life-saving CPR after that as well. But she was a lone female senior police officer responding to this threat in what's undoubtedly a case of really undeniable bravery. We do know now that this man allegedly killed five people in this shopping centre in, in Sydney. We've heard more details from the police about how the attack unfolded. They said that at three past, sorry, at three o'clock, 10 past three, the attacker came into the shopping center. A short while later, he left it, then came back at uh, 20 past three, which is when he started stabbing nine people. We now know that five people have been killed and a number of them are injured and the police say a number of them in a critical, serious situation. One of them is a small child, the police say. We've heard from the ambulance service earlier that a nine-month-old baby had been stabbed, so sadly a confirmation of that. Uh, we've heard from the ambulance service as well that they've had 14 units responding, four teams on the ground still helping people because there could be still a number of people inside that shopping centre. But we don't know who the assailant is. And also, at this point, we don't know what the motive might be. That's right. They're still uh, working to identify the attacker and establish a motive. Uh, they're not ruling out terrorism, but they're keeping their minds open, they say. And police say that they believe the, sus the suspect acted alone. They say that there's no continuing threat. But a terrible day for the relatives of those five people who have died in this shopping centre in Sydney this afternoon.
It's 10 o'clock. Breaking news this morning. Five people are stabbed to death at a shopping centre in Sydney. The culprit has been shot dead by police. A number of other people have been taken to hospital with some in a serious or even critical condition. One of them is said to be a small child. There he was. He just came in and just started floating towards us. And all I heard was put it down. And then um, she shot him. The attack took place at the Westfield Mall in the Bondi area of the city. Police say they believe the attacker acted alone. We'll have the latest live on this developing story here on Sky News during the next hour. During that engagement, it caused harm to those people, we believe, by stabbing them with a weapon he was carrying. Good morning. We begin with a breaking and developing story this morning. A major police operation is underway in Sydney in Australia following multiple fatal stabbings at a shopping centre there. Five people have been killed and a number of others are in a critical condition, including a baby, following the attack at the Westfield Bondi Junction Centre. A man has also been shot. Emergency services were called just before four in the afternoon local time to reports of multiple people stabbed at the shopping centre. Hundreds of others were evacuated from the Westfield Bondi Junction in the east of Sydney and New South Wales police have urged people to avoid the area. This video shows a man with a large knife running through the shopping centre. He is confronted on an escalator by a shopper uh, and witnesses described their terror. It's just like the worst thing ever. Like, who does that to people? I, I didn't see him properly. I was running. But um, it's just, it was insane. It was insanity. I wasn't expecting it. What, what was going through your mind as you were trying to get out? I thought I was going to die. I saw a lady open the door, a security guard, and she was waving like this. And pretty much about five seconds after that, just behind me, about five gunshots went off. There he was, he just came in and just started floating towards us and all I heard was put it down and then um, she shot him. But we were not in fact, she didn't shoot him. Well, uh, he would have kept going. He was on the rampage. He was on the bloody rampage. And then, then she walked over and gave him C then was giving him CPR. So, and they had a nice big blade on him. In the last hour, police gave this update. 10 past 3 this afternoon, a male walked into Westfield at Bondi Junction. He left the centre very shortly after and returned about 20 past 3. As he moved through the centre, he engaged with about nine people. It is clear that during that engagement, he caused harm to those people, we believe, by stabbing them with a weapon he was carrying. Very clearly, a range of reports were made of the incident. Police attended promptly. A single unit officer, inspector of police, was nearby, attended, uh, went into the centre, directed by a range of people. She confronted the offender who had moved by this stage to level five. As she continued to walk quickly behind him to catch up with him, he turned, faced her, raised a knife, she discharged a firearm and that person is now deceased. I'm advised that there are five victims who are now deceased as a result of the actions of this offender. Uh, there are more than several other people who have been conveyed to hospital. A number of those are in serious and or critical conditions at this stage and I do not have further information in relation to um, descriptions of those people. I know one of them is a small child, as is the case in, in these incidents. Uh, a critical incident has been declared uh, and investigations in relation to the matter uh, have commenced and are continuing uh, both at the scene and a number of uh, hospitals uh, in the nearby area. Uh, from preliminary inquiries, it would appear that this person has acted alone. I am content that there is no continuing threat. 
Uh, police, as I've said, have commenced investigations into the matter, which will continue through the evening. As I have said, I do not have details of victims who have been uh, killed by this individual, nor those who have been conveyed to hospital for treatment. So I cannot provide you further information in relation to them, only to say that very clearly, our hearts go out uh, to all of them, uh, as they do to anyone touched by this terrible incident this afternoon. I do not have information in relation to the offender. I do not know at this stage who he is. You would be, uh, you would understand this is quite raw. Uh, inquiries are very new and we are continuing to make attempts to identify the offender in this matter. Uh, that is it for the moment in terms of information that I have for you. Brent from New South Wales Angles. Thank you, Tony. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, shortly after three o'clock uh, today, New South Wales Ambulance received multiple triple zero calls for uh, persons stabbed within Westfield Bondi Junction. Uh, we've responded a total of 40 uh, resources to the scene who remain on scene uh, still. Uh, that included a total of four medical teams. Uh, New South Wales Ambulance uh, assessed and transported uh, eight, uh, eight patients uh, to various uh, facilities, hospital facilities uh, across Sydney uh, and assessed uh, a total of six patients uh, who have been deemed deceased on scene. Thank you. Questions? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. There's nothing that we are aware of at the scene that would indicate any motive or any ideology. So, so are you ruling out terrorism? We're not ruling anything out. You said he went into the centre, went away and came back. Yes. What went on there? Do you know where he went? We do not know. What I do know is that he did enter the centre at 3 o'clock. He left for a short period, returned at 3.20. And Was what he... is that weapon when it's nothing? A knife of some description. I don't have those particulars. What's Was the this... period of time between when the attacks were first recorded and when the situation was brought up? This all happened very, very quickly. The officer was in the near vicinity, attended on her own, was guided to the location of the offender by people who were in the centre, and she took the actions that she did, saving a range of people's lives. Did I hear you correctly before you said she was an inspector? An inspector, that's right. A very senior police officer. A senior police officer. And how was she now? Alone? She was on her own. Yeah. And how long between when she arrived on scene until she had that? She engaged immediately on her arrival to the scene. Would be a safe thing? Would you say that sharks anything? Or was there any force putting my sharks? Well, I don't have any indication of any motivation coming from the scene at all. You must appreciate that uh, things are very, very raw at this stage, and we are in the very early stages of investigations. Tony, we heard, we know there's one baby that uh, has been stabbed. Of the five dead or the others injured, do you know? If the remainder are adults or are there any other children? Oh, I don't have that detail at the moment, I'm sorry. Have you ever seen anything like this in your career? Oh, this is a really difficult circumstance. Uh, no. It's a very big crime scene here. What's the police investigation going to be like over the next couple of days? Lengthy. Lengthy and precise. There were reports of people mm. still hiding in stores. What's the process now in terms of checking? Oh, we, are, we are working through the crime scene to retain control and you would understand that you know first and foremost this is about dealing with this terrible situation making sure that all people are safe and then working through and returning to normalcy how do you know that he was in the centre and came back is that from cctv or did he interact with them no from C monitoring of cctv ladies and gents oh, i'm sorry it's really difficult at this very early stage to give more information i'll be briefing our executive uh, shortly and i understand that there will be uh, further briefings later. And how many witnesses have been involved? jumped in and tried to assist some of the victims? What do you have to say to some of those people who, who tried to help? Well, I'm not sure of the detail, but there are obviously people who become uh, very brave in circumstances. Thanks, everybody. Thanks Thank you very much. Thanks. Australia's Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has posted on the social media site X saying he's been briefed by police. He went on to say that tragically multiple casualties have been reported and the first thoughts of all Australians are with those affected and their loved ones. Our hearts go out to those injured, he continued, 
and we offer our thanks to those caring for them, as well as our brave police and first responders. We can speak now to our correspondent, Nicole Johnston. And Nicole, this happened at four o'clock local time in Sydney on a busy Saturday in a busy shopping centre. That's right, and I think what will stick in the mind of hip people in Sydney and across Australia is that chilling video of the suspect walking through Westfield Shopping Centre Mall at Bondi Junction, carrying what appears to be a long knife, uh, the weapon that he used, and that is quite striking video. We heard in that account from New South Wales Police about the senior police officer who happened to be in the area confronting the suspect. He said that uh, she walked behind him quickly, caught up with him, he turned around and then he was shot. This was a horrific act of violence, indiscriminately targeted at innocent people going about an ordinary Saturday doing their shopping. Tonight, the first thoughts of all Australians are with the victims of these terrible acts and their loved ones. Our nation offers our deepest condolences and sympathies to all those who are grieving for someone they have lost, and we send our strength to those who have been injured. And all of us are thinking of the dedicated doctors, nurses and healthcare workers who will be working through the night to save lives and to care for their fellow Australians. Today, Bondi Junction was the scene of shocking violence, but it was also witness to the humanity and the heroism of our fellow Australians. Our brave police, our first responders, and of course everyday people who could never have imagined that they would face such a moment. And some of the footage is quite extraordinary. Staff for whom this should have been a normal shift. Shoppers peacefully going about their lives. And yet for these Australians, their first instinct in the face of danger was to help someone else. That is what we hold on to tonight as Australians. That's confirmation of who we are. Brave, strong, together. The work of the New South Wales Police and the Australian Federal Police is ongoing. But what we can say for sure tonight is this. To any Australian affected by this tragedy, every Australian is with you. Before I hand to Commissioner Kershaw, uh, I can say that I've also spoken with uh, the New South Wales uh, Acting Premier uh, tonight and the Commonwealth stands ready to assist in every way possible. Commissioner Kershaw. Thanks, Prime Minister. Tonight, the AFP is supporting New South Wales Police investigate a mass casualty event in Sydney. The AFP has deployed AFP members to the crime scene and we've offered our full specialist capability, such as digital forensics. It is too early to determine a motive and it would be unhelpful to speculate. I want to reassure the community that the AFP is providing New South Wales Police with whatever support is required. And tonight I've also spoken with the New South Wales Police Commissioner and the D Director General ASIO. And finally, I would like to give my condolences to the victims and families out there. Given Dad. your opening remarks, I know you've sort of addressed this in part, but given the attack was in Bondi and the seat of Wentworth in eastern Sydney, I think there are people asking about where the terror is part of this attack at all, do you have any information about whether there was any terror, terrorist motivation in this attack? Having spoken with the New South Wales Police Commissioner, at this stage it's too early to uh, give that assessment. Uh, however, all the agencies, the right agencies, are working together to make that assessment. PM, would you comment on that given that there are already a lot of people speculating about that as a possible motivation here? What's your response to that, motiva that speculation? I think the AFP Commissioner uh, has made it clear uh, that speculation, uh, certainly not from uh, myself, would be uh, unhelpful at this time. Uh, we should allow the investigators to go about their work. Uh, the police, I've also had a discussion uh, tonight with the Director General of ASIO, 
the motive at this stage is unknown. And we will, of course, uh, continue to update uh, the Australian public as more information is known. Commissioner, just how serious is this incident in Australia? It's very serious, uh, given uh, the amount of people that have been harmed. And, uh, you know, it's something that we take seriously. We, we do, uh, sadly, exercise for these kinds of events. And what I would say, the police and the emergency services on the ground there are doing an incredible job. And uh, also working with victims and trauma, um, quite some incredible work from all the services. Can you say anything about how many AFP resources have been mobilised because of this? Not at this stage, but it's hard to say because you have people at the scene, but you then have the support in the, in the back end of our business. So a lot of people are working on this right now and we work together. Uh, and New South Wales Police have the lead on this. And Pam, what would you say to Australians who are worried about other attacks, whether this may lead to other attacks or spur them on, whether there should be any concern about further threats? Look, it certainly is, uh, is, is my view that we should allow uh, this investigation to take place. Uh, it, it would appear uh, that this person has elect, acted alone. Uh, the motives are not known yet and uh, speculation on that would not be uh, helpful at, at this time. Uh, but we have been uh, clear and transparent and I know that the New South Wales Police as well as now uh, the AFP have made information available uh, as, as a priority because we understand that the Australian public uh, will be very shocked by this event. Our heart goes out to them. And I think also, uh, in, in conclusion, can I say, I spoke before about the bravery uh, that has been exhibited here. Uh, the bravery of uh, the police officer uh, who she entered uh, the proceedings that were taking place, obviously very dangerous, uh, by herself. Uh, she is certainly a hero. There is no doubt that she saved lives uh, through her action. And it is a reminder that uh, those people who wear uniform uh, are people who uh, rush to danger, not away from it. And I give thanks to every, every one of them. Uh, for the actions that they've taken up to now and the actions that they will take over the coming days, which will be a difficult period as well. Thank you. They seem to think the attacker was alone as well. So that response there from Australia's Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. We can go back to uh, my colleague, Nicole, now. And Nicole, sorry to interrupt you there, to go to Anthony Albanese, but just let's set the context here. As you were saying, a busy shopping centre on a busy Saturday afternoon in an area of Sydney that we heard Anthony Albanese say there yesterday is very popular, not least with tourists to Sydney as well. That's right, popular with tourists and with locals, people attending the beaches, uh, travelling from one side of Sydney to the other because it's close to not only the eastern suburbs, it's close to the centre 
of Sydney as well. That was a very solemn press conference that we heard from the country's Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, speaking from Canberra. He said how devastating it is that the nation will be shocked by the news and that it is a time for the nation to exhibit unity and pull together. He also emphasised the bravery and he called it heroism of the police officer that you just mentioned. She was in the area when uh, this attack took place. She entered on her own. The police had reported that somebody who was inside the shopping mall pointed out to her where the suspect was. She gained pace, uh, moved up quickly behind him. He turned around, raised his knife and she shot him. Five people have been killed, reports also from New South Wales. Ambulance of eight people injured, including a nine-month-old baby. Uh, they are in different hospitals across the city. We've heard some of the accounts from Sydney siders outside the Westfield Shopping Centre. The shock and trauma, you can hear it in their voice. The last thing, thing that someone expects to have happen on a quiet Saturday afternoon in the city. So... A lot of people are sort of sending messages to each other, checking on uh, relatives and friends. Were they in the shopping centre? Because this is a shopping centre that's huge. It spans a couple of blocks. It's multi-level, you know, vast uh, car parks as well. So you can imagine how difficult it would have been to get people out, to lock it down, to try and ensure that there was only one person involved. There had been earlier reports that there were two, but the police have confirmed one suspect it has now drawn to a close at bondi junction but the big question is what was the motive and who was this man so far no information about that and both the prime minister and the police really pushing back on any attempt to speculate about it at this stage anthony albanese was asked uh, did he think it was terrorism related a question he wouldn't answer but of course the investigations will be going forward they will. As you said there, Nicole, the uh, Federal Police Commissioner, Reese Kershaw, was asked how unusual something like this is in Australia. And of course it is, but there has, like in many places, been a threat of something like this happening. Can you put it in context for us? Well, there's always the potential for any type of attack to happen in Australia. I think what's notable about this one, though, is that it was a stabbing attack, uh, something that you don't hear about very often in Australia. One of the reasons for that, of course, is that Australia has strict gun control laws. So if somebody was planning on carrying out a t an attack in that country, they would have a difficult time accessing firearms. Uh, Australia has had these strict laws for years now. So we can see here that the assailant uh, chose a knife or some kind of sharp implement for this attack and we had that really chilling footage of him moving through the shopping mall not quite running but with pace people sort of trying to get out of his way gathered around him uh, we heard as i said about the bravery that anthony albanese mentioned people not getting too involved but trying to point out where he was uh, at the same time as looking after themselves and getting to safety. We've heard all sorts of reports from people talking about, you know, huddled down in various shops inside that shopping centre, uh, staff inside the shopping centre, taking groups of people to secure areas. And we'll be hearing more of those as the hours come by. And uh, Australians are really sort of coming to terms with this news. Absolutely, Nicole. Thank you very much indeed. My colleague, Nicole Johnston, there. You are watching Sky News today. Coming up, we will bring you more on this developing story from Australia, where several people have been stabbed, five are dead, uh, and at least one person has been shot dead at the Westfield Shopping Centre in the Bondi area of Sydney. In order to affect policy change, we need good scientific foundation for our campaigning work. And so I'm very pleased to say that Andrew Knight and Emily Davis reviewed 42 pieces of published scientific peer-reviewed literature looking at the health and welfare of tigers, in particular kept in circus environments. Um, they looked at several things. They looked at their nutrition, their environment, behavioural interactions, their health and their mental health too. 
and they found that all of these were unsurprisingly compromised by the small enclosures, the constant travelling, the inaccessibility of, of proper food, as you've mentioned, the exposure to loud noises and, and crowds, exposure to other animals too, um, and this was very clearly as a result of their... Uh, it, it... From that nine-month-old baby that Andrei had seen before, the centre, she was smiling with her mum, they'd come here for an outing, month old baby no motive yet from the attacker who was shot dead by a police officer who seemed to be off duty at the time but chased down the attacker in the Westfield shopping center uh, shooting him dead uh, let's hear now from some of the people who helped uh, those who were injured at the scene and then, yeah. The mum got stabbed and the mum came over with the baby and, and threw it at me and just holding the baby, yeah, it looked pretty bad, but yeah. And how were you able to help out? I was just, help. just holding the baby and trying to compress the baby and the same with the mother, trying to compress the blood from stopping and calling ambulance and police. And what, what did you use to help stop the blood? Just, oh, just shirts just... from the shop. Just kept yelling out to get some clothes, get some shirts and and just, just help us to compress and, and stop the babies from bleeding. And, and what sort of condition was the actual baby? We understand it was a nine-month-old. Mother holding mother the baby so well and really compressing, I think the baby's fine. The mother, unfortunately, me and another lady, which were compressing, she started to have a lot of blood coming out of her mouth. Here, shock there in the Bondi Junction area of Sydney. This the scene at the shopping centre there where an attacker wielding a knife uh, stabbed and killed five people before being shot dead himself, but several others injured, as we heard there, including a mother and, we think, a nine-month-old baby. Stay with us. We'll have more on that, but let's uh, quickly check on the weather now. Temperatures will return closer to April averages this weekend as we lose the mild southwesterly flow to a cooler northwesterly. Unsettled conditions will dominate for the next few days, but there's a good signal for more settled weather next weekend. Southeastern parts of the country will see the warmest conditions this afternoon, although temperatures will be down a degree or two on yesterday's highs. It'll be cooler elsewhere as a weakening band of patchy rain spreads south. Blustery showers will follow into the north and the west, and these will be heavy at times with the risk of some thunder. Over the higher ground, there's still the potential for them to turn wintry once more. Overnight, cloud and patchy rain will clear southeastern areas to leave a largely dry, cold night. And temperatures, as you can see, will fall back to single figures in some parts, with areas from Wales northwards vulnerable to a frost. Showers will persist in the north and northwest, heavy and wintry at times. Sunday will be a breezy day, with showers becoming more widespread. However, there will be sunny spells in between. You're watching Sky News coming up. We'll bring you more on that major developing story from Australia, where several people have been stabbed and at least one person has been shot in a shopping centre in Sydney. Thank you. 
stabbed at the Westfield Shopping Centre. Hundreds were evacuated uh, in Bondi Junction in the east of Sydney and New South Wales police have urged people to avoid the area. This video shows a man with a knife running through the shopping centre. You can see he is confronted on an escalator by another person uh, and witnesses describe their terror. <laughs> it's just like the worst thing ever. Like who does that to people? I, I didn't see him properly, I was running, but um, it's just, it was insane. It was insanity, I wasn't expecting it. What, what was going through your mind as you were trying to get out? I thought I was gonna die. I saw a lady open the door, a security guard, and she was waving like this. And pretty much about five seconds after that, just behind me, about five gunshots went off. There he was, he just came in and just started floating towards us, and all I heard was put it down. And then um, she shot him, but we were not in Fiji. She didn't shoot him. Well, uh, he would have kept going. He was on the rampage. He was on the bloody rampage. And then, then she walked over and gave him C then was giving him CPR. So, and they had a nice big blade on him. In the last hour, police gave this update. Ten past three this afternoon, a male walked into Westfield at Bondi Junction. He left the centre very shortly after and returned about 20 past three. As he moved through the centre, he engaged with about nine people. It is clear that during that engagement, he caused harm to those people, we believe, by stabbing them with a weapon he was carrying. Very clearly, a range of reports were made of the incident. Police attended promptly. A single unit officer, inspector of police, was nearby, attended. Uh, went into the centre, directed by a range of people. She confronted the offender who had moved by this stage to 
level five as she continued to walk quickly behind him to catch up with him. He turned, faced her, raised a knife. She discharged a firearm and that person is now deceased. I'm advised that there are five victims who are now deceased as a result of the actions of this offender. Uh, there are more than several other people who have been conveyed to hospital. A number of those are in serious and or critical conditions at this stage and I do not have further information in relation to um, descriptions of those people. I know one of them is a small child. As is the case in, in these incidents, uh, a critical incident has been declared uh, and investigations in relation to the matter uh, have commenced and are continuing uh, both at the scene and a number of uh, hospitals uh, in the nearby area. Uh, from preliminary inquiries, it would appear that this person has acted alone. I am content that there is no continuing threat. Uh, police, as I've said, have commenced investigations into the matter, which will continue through the evening. As I have said, I do not have details of victims who have been um, killed by this individual, nor those who have been conveyed to hospital for treatment. So I cannot provide you further information in relation to them, only to say that very clearly our hearts go out uh, to all of them. Uh, as they do to anyone touched by this terrible incident this afternoon. I do not have information in relation to the offender. I do not know at this stage who he is. You would, be, uh, you would understand this is quite raw. Uh, inquiries are very new and we are continuing to make attempts to identify the offender in this matter. Well, the Australian Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, has also been speaking in the last half hour. The devastating scenes at Bondi Junction are beyond words or understanding. Australians will be shocked this evening. This was a horrific act of violence, indiscriminately targeted at innocent people going about an ordinary Saturday doing their shopping. Tonight, the first thoughts of all Australians are with the victims of these terrible acts and their loved ones. Our nation offers our deepest condolences and sympathies to all those who are grieving for someone they have lost, and we send our strength to those who have been injured. And all of us are thinking of the dedicated doctors, nurses and healthcare workers who will be working through the night to save lives and to care for their fellow Australians. Today, Bondi Junction was the scene of shocking violence, but it was also witness to the humanity and the heroism of our fellow Australians. Our brave police, our first responders, and of course, everyday people who could never have imagined that they would face such a moment. And some of the footage is quite extraordinary. Staff for whom this should have been a normal shift. Shoppers peacefully going about their lives. And yet for these Australians, their first instinct in the face of danger was to help someone else. That is what we hold on to tonight as Australians. That's confirmation of who we are. Brave, strong, together. Uh, we'll take a look at some other stories making the news uh, this Saturday morning. And the US President Joe Biden has warned Iran not to retaliate after blaming Israel for an airstrike that killed two Iranian generals in the Syrian capital of Damascus last week. Israel's military says it's prepared plans to respond to a possible attack by Iran. President Biden said America expected it to retaliate sooner rather than later. My expectation sooner than later. Message to Iran in this moment. Don't. Are American personnel at that risk, Mr. President?
Mr. President, are, are American troops at risk as well? We are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support Israel. We will defend, help defend Israel. And Iran will not succeed. Thank you very much. The Royal Navy has seized nearly 33 million pounds worth of drugs from traffickers in the Indian Ocean. Around 3.7 tonnes of substances that include heroin, crystal meth and cannabis were taken by crews aboard the HMS Lancaster. And now, with millions expected to tune in to watch the Grand National this afternoon, there are renewed safety concerns over the risk to horses. It comes after two were killed yesterday after falling at fences on the second day of the Aintree Festival. We can get more on this now. Rob Harris, our... Oh, yes. What's happening?
Sydney in Australia. Others, including a baby, have been taken to hospital in a serious condition. There he was, he just came out and just started floating towards us and all I heard was put it down and then um, she shot him. The man who carried out the attack was confronted by a police officer who shot him dead inside the shopping mall. During that engagement, he caused harm to those people, we believe, by stabbing them with a weapon he was carrying. Also this morning, the US president says he expects an Iranian attack on Israel will happen sooner rather than later. A cable car collapses in Turkey. One person is killed and nearly 200 are still trapped in midair. Plus, safety fears ahead of this afternoon's Grand National. Organizers say that risk is a part of the sport. And who's this? Could it be Liverpool's latest signing? Jurgen Klopp speaks to Sky News about the title run-in and his own plans for the future. Good morning. We begin this morning with a developing story. A major police oper operation is underway in Sydney following multiple fatal stabbings at a shopping centre there. Six people have been killed and a number of others are critical, including a baby following the incident at the Westfield Bondi Junction Centre. A man has also been shot. Emergency services were called just before four o'clock local time to reports of multiple people stabbed at a shopping centre. Hundreds of others were evacuated from the Westfield Bondi Junction in the east of Sydney. And New South Wales Police have urged people to avoid the area. This video shows a man with a knife running through the shopping centre. He was then confronted on an escalator by someone else and witnesses have been describing their terror. It's just like the worst thing ever. Like who does that to people? I, I didn't see him properly, I was running. But um, it's just, it was insane. It was insanity, I wasn't expecting it. What, what was going through your mind as you were trying to get out? I thought I was gonna die. I saw a lady open the door, a security guard, and she was waving like this. And pretty much about five seconds after that, just behind me, about five gunshots went off. There he was, he just came in and just started floating towards us, and all I heard was put it down, and then um, she shot him. But we were not, if she didn't shoot him, well, uh, he would have kept going. He was on the rampage. He was on the bloody rampage. And then, then she walked over and gave him CPR, then was giving him CPR. So, and they had a nice big blade on him. Meanwhile, these people were in the shopping centre at the time of the attack. They say they delivered first aid to a baby who'd been injured. A warning, you may find their words distressing. <laughs> it's just like the worst thing ever. Maybe he got stabbed and then, yeah. The mum got stabbed and the mum came over with a baby and, and threw it at me and just holding the baby, yeah, it looked pretty bad, but yeah. And how were you able to help out? It just helped us holding the baby and trying to compress the baby and same with the mother, trying to compress the blood from stopping and calling ambulance and police. And what, what did you use to help stop the blood? Just, oh, just shirts just from the shop. Just kept yelling out to get some clothes, get some shirts and and just, just help us to compress and, and stop the babies from bleeding. And, and what sort of condition was the actual baby? We understand it was a nine month With old. Mother holding mother. the baby so well and really compressing, I think the baby's fine. The mother, unfortunately, me and another lady, which were compressing, she started to have a lot of blood coming out of her mouth. Sky News Australia reporter Julia Bradley joins me now from outside Waverley Police Station in Sydney. Uh, Julia, what is the situation there now? Well, it is uh, now a situation which has been uh, controlled. There's no active threat to the public, but really people still just trying to come to terms with what happened here in Sydney's east this afternoon at one of our largest shopping centres, Westfield at Bondi Junction. It was a horrific scene and what we saw were hundreds of shoppers being evacuated from this shopping centre, running out screaming as a result of this stabbing attack. We know now, as you said, six people have died as a result of this, including the mother 
of that nine months old girl that was stabbed in this incident as well. And I've been speaking with witnesses this afternoon who have all expressed just how scary it was to be in the shopping centre at that time. They were just trying to stay safe in any way that they could. They heard those gunshots ring out and they uh, tried to find safety either in the centre bathrooms or in shops. Now, it was a hero police officer that ended up shooting uh, that lone attacker. She was in the area at the time of this stabbing attack. She went into the centre on her own, a female police inspector, and that is when she deployed her firearm, shooting this attacker dead. Now, police are now investigating what caused this incident in terms of whether there was a motive, whether there was an ideology uh, for this lone attacker. They haven't given uh, many details as of yet as to why this occurred, but we will be hearing from our New South Wales Police Commissioner Karen Webb in about half an hour's time. Now, there was a huge response to this incident. We saw countless ambulances and police cars outside of the shopping centre this afternoon. People who've parked in that shopping centre now not able to access uh, their cars. And this afternoon, people have really just been standing around uh, watching and waiting and, and waiting for more information on what has occurred. Uh, Julia, as well, in the past half hour, uh, having initially been told five people had died in the attack, we now understand that that number is at six, uh, a development there that another person has died as a result of this. That's right. So it's very much a developing situation in terms of the people who have been caught up in this incident, those who were stabbed by this lone attacker. We know that nine people uh, were stabbed uh, and we know now that six people have died as a result of this. Uh, the people who were stabbed, they were taken to a nearby hospital for treatment. We know that conditions uh, range from serious uh, to critical. So it's very much a watch and see at the moment, uh, wait and see as to how these other people who are in a serious or critical condition are faring. But uh, really uh, disappointing, really sad news to hear uh, that just in the last few minutes, another person uh, has died as a result of this stabbing attack. Julia Bradley, Sky News Australia in Sydney uh, this afternoon, your time. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, well, in the last couple of hours, local police gave this update. 10 past three this afternoon, a male walked into Westfield at Bondi Junction. He left the centre very shortly after and returned about 20 past three. As he moved through the centre, he engaged with about nine people. It is clear that during that engagement, he caused harm to those people we believe by stabbing them with a weapon he was carrying. Very clearly a range of reports were made of the incident. Police attended promptly. A single unit officer, inspector of police, was nearby, attended, uh, went into the centre, directed by a range of people. She confronted the offender who had moved by this stage to level five as she continued to walk quickly behind him to catch up with him. He turned, faced her, raised a knife. She discharged a firearm and that person is now deceased. I'm advised that there are five victims who are now deceased as a result of the actions of this offender. Uh, there are more than several other people who have been conveyed to hospital. A number of those are in serious and or critical conditions at this stage and I do not have further information in relation to um, descriptions of those people. I know one of them is a small child, as is the case in, in these incidents. Uh, a critical incident has been declared uh, and investigations in relation to the matter uh, have commenced and are continuing uh, both at the scene and a number of uh, hospitals uh, in the nearby area. Uh, from preliminary inquiries it would appear that this person has acted alone. I am content 
that there is no continuing threat. Uh, police, as I've said, have commenced investigations into the matter, which will continue through the evening. As I have said, I do not have details of victims who have been um, killed by this individual, nor those who have been conveyed to hospital for treatment. So I cannot provide you further information in relation to them, only to say that very clearly, our hearts go out uh, to all of them, uh, as they do to anyone touched by this terrible incident this afternoon. I do not have information in relation to the offender. I do not know at this stage who he is. You would be, uh, you would understand this is quite raw. Uh, inquiries are very new and we are continuing to make attempts to identify the offender in this matter. Well, meanwhile, Australia's Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, has condemned what happened as a horrific act of violence and he did pay tribute to the first responders. The devastating scenes at Bondi Junction are beyond words or understanding. Australians will be shocked this evening. This was a horrific act of violence, indiscriminately targeted at innocent people going about an ordinary Saturday doing their shopping. Tonight, the first thoughts of all Australians are with the victims of these terrible acts and their loved ones. Our nation offers our deepest condolences and sympathies to all those who are grieving for someone they have lost, and we send our strength to those who have been injured. And all of us are thinking of the dedicated doctors, nurses and healthcare workers who will be working through the night to save lives and to care for their fellow Australians. Today, Bondi Junction was a scene of shocking violence, but it was also witness to the humanity and the heroism of our fellow Australians. Our brave police, our first responders, and of course, everyday people who could never have imagined that they would face such a moment. And some of the footage is quite extraordinary. Staff for whom this should have been a normal shift. Shoppers peacefully going about their lives. And yet for these Australians, their first instinct in the face of danger was to help someone else. That is what we hold on to tonight as Australians. That's confirmation of who we are. Brave, strong, together. Diane Alexa saw what happened, joins me now from Sydney. Diana, thanks so much on what uh, I'm sure has been a difficult day for you. You were in the shopping centre when this happened. Uh, describe what you experienced. So I went in there today to body sculpt clinics on level six for a procedure. I finished my procedure, I was on my way out of the um, clinic and then somebody ran into the shop and they're like, there's a man with a gun, there's a man with a gun, uh, lock all the doors and, you know, hide. And so, like, we waited around for a second because we weren't sure. Then we heard, like, five gunshots go off, and then we heard the evacuation alarm go off. And um, so then we hid inside the store for maybe about 25, 30 minutes. Um, the police didn't come to us at this time, but we felt a little bit brave. So we're like, you know what? We're going to go out there. We're going to see if we can get out of here. Um, then we ended up going into the car park, and we still thought, where do we go? Like, you know, we it's a bit unsafe to just stand around went down to level five where, where the incident actually happened as i was walking through i saw a man on the ground he, i'm pretty sure he was dead and the um police officer was giving him cpr like pumping on his chest but walking the opposite direction to try like find an exit and then um i looked down and i saw a lady like she looked pretty badly wounded and she was getting placed in like an ambulance bed and then a copper like a cop he started running past us and he's like oh get inside the shop um hide lock yourself in I'm like, oh, we thought it was safe to evacuate because we saw the evacuation alarm. He's like, hide, hide, hide. So we hid inside like uh, Miller, the store Miller. And the problem with Miller was uh, their sliding doors wouldn't lock and the switches wouldn't work. So we were stuck like in a shop that didn't have a locked door. And so we hid in this office in the back for a while until like the police came 15, 20 minutes later and told us we can get out. So we went like through the back exits to get out. When, Diana, did you realise what was happening? When did you realise there had been a man attacking people with a knife in the shopping centre? 
Well, um, at the time, we all thought it was a gunman because um, we just heard like the gunshots. But then we, when we came out, we realized it was a man attacking people with knives. Uh, which must have been terrifying for you. Yeah, it was astonishing because this doesn't really happen in Australia. I mean, I was saying to my classmates just the other week, nothing big ever really happens here. Like, you know, it's usually America based. And then, bang, today it actually happened. Yeah, which is shocking for us sitting here thousands of miles away. What's been the reaction like in Sydney? Oh, everyone's quite shocked because, um, like I said, we didn't expect it. Everyone was just going there to do their shopping, get their appointments out of the way. I mean, this is the last thing you expect to happen in such a popular, like, uh, tourist destination too because Bondi is in the centre. All the tourists come through that way. Do you know what I mean? And what's, uh, what's the Westfield Shopping Centre in Bondi Junction normally like on a Saturday afternoon? It's usually really packed. I mean, I used to work in Harvey Norman a few years back, like, um, and we used to have people from all over the world, like even actors from America, um, uh, the guy from the babysitter, he would even come in, like, you know, so we have all sorts of people coming in, um, especially on warm days. Like I said, it's a tourist destination. Mm. But Diana, I have to ask now, you know, a few, year, a few hours rather after this happened, is it settling in as to what you experienced? Are you getting your head around it? Look, I feel quite calm and I thank God that I got out there safe, but I'm quite angry about what happened to the others, especially to the little baby, because the little baby got you know, stabbed during this encounter, so, yeah. Yeah, we don't know the exact details. We don't know of any motive yet. The authorities are investigating, uh, and yet still the, uh, the shopping centre is closed off. We're seeing pictures on the screen now, by the way, of who presume is the attacker holding... Uh, a knife. When you heard those gunshots you described at the start there, it sounds like that was this police officer who shot the attacker dead. Did you see any more of that after you heard those gunshots? Uh, no, I didn't, but when I went down to level five, I'm not sure if that was the guy that was laying down on the floor, because there was a man on the floor and the police were pumping on his chest and the shooting happened in level five, so, yeah. And how were other people reacting? They must have been scared. Yeah, well, you know what? I think everyone um, did their best today. Like, there was a lot of panic, but people weren't stampeding on top of each other. There were so many people trying to help as well. Like, all the store, uh, store owners, they were getting people to come in so they could lock the door and hide them. Like, so I think everybody worked well together. And when the police came out too, they did everything properly. Like, you felt safe, like, being in their presence. So. OK. Diana, thanks so much for taking the time uh, talking to us here on Sky News. That's Diana Alexa, who was in the Westfield Shopping Centre when this attack happened. Just a reminder, uh, the latest uh, death toll we have there is six people were killed, several others injured in that knife attack in Westfield in Bondi Junction in the east of Sydney. We can speak now to our correspondent, Nicole Johnston. And, Nicole, we heard from Diana there that this kind of thing is unusual in Australia. Australians feeling it's the kind of thing that happens elsewhere, but now, of course, it's happened in their biggest city. That's right, of course it can happen in Australia just as it can happen anywhere in the world. And I think anyone coming to this news now in Australia and internationally will be a really struck that something like this has taken place in downtown Sydney, in the eastern suburbs and area really considered one of the safest areas of the city. Uh, we heard from the Australian Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. I think his, his message was strong and it was solemn. He described the scenes as beyond words and understanding. He said it was devastating, our hearts go out, the nation is in shock. He really highlighted the heroism and the bravery of not only the emergency responders who were apparently on the scene within 20 minutes, but people, ordinary people inside the shopping mall who did their best to try and either point out the suspect to police. Uh, we can also see in some of the video a man standing between a woman and her child. So I'm, I think we'll hear more about those sort of acts of bravery over the coming hours and days. Also, of course, that striking video that we're seeing of the suspect walking through the shopping mall. It seems quite calculated. He's not running. Uh, we can see he's ha holding uh, a large knife. He's on an escalator at some point. 
And then, as we know, we heard from the police about how he was eventually shot. A police officer in the area, a police inspector, she came in, she tracked him, she gained pace up to him. He turned around, according to police, he raised the knife and then he was shot. In the last half an hour or so, we have heard that it's not five people killed, it is six who have been stabbed and the reports are that that sixth person is the mother of a nine-month-old nine baby who was also stabbed. So some terrible stories are coming out from this violent attack at the Westfield Shopping Centre and, you know, an incredibly rare thing to be happening in Australia. And Nicole, people will inevitably hear what's happened and jump to conclusions, but the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, and the police as well, keen to not fuel any speculation, saying the investigations have to take place before uh, any motivation for this is established. Of course, it's, it's early hours. It's only a few hours since this attack uh, took place. Both the Prime Minister and the police really pushing back on any of that speculation. They were asked by the media at the press conference, did they think it could be terrorism related? Did they know who the man was? Did they have any idea of what his motive was? They said at this stage, no information about that. So certainly keeping sort of tight lipped on that. We're heading into Australian evening and nighttime now. We are expecting another press conference in the next sort of half an hour or so. So hopefully some more information will come out then. And then when Australians uh, wake up again on Sunday, you know, these investigations will be going on and we would expect to then find out more about who is this man. We would. Uh, Nicole, for now, thank you very much indeed. That's our correspondent, Nicole Johnston. You're watching Sky News today, still to come. We'll bring you more on that developing story from Australia where we now know six people have been killed and at least one person has been shot dead in the shopping centre in Sydney. In order to affect policy change, we need good scientific foundation for our campaigning work. And so I'm very pleased to say that Andrew Knight and Emily Davis reviewed 42 pieces of published scientific peer-reviewed literature looking at the health and welfare of tigers, in particular kept in circus environments. Um, they looked at several things. They looked at their nutrition, their environment, behavioural interactions, their health and their mental health too. And they found that all of these were unsurprisingly compromised by the small enclosures, the constant travelling, the inaccessibility of, of proper food. As you've mentioned, the exposure to loud noises and, and crowds, exposure to other animals too. Um, and this was very clearly as a result of their uh, you know, investigation, not an environment where we should continue to keep tigers. Now, obviously in the UK, um, this has been phased out, but I'm very sad to say that across Europe, we still see a large number of big cats being kept in circuses, and it's a, a serious issue. Well, constant campaigning over many years, lots of agencies got together and pointed out the inadequacies of, you know, our ability to keep animals when they were travelling like this. Um, they're significantly compromised. So, you know, when you think that a tiger, for instance, in the course of its day in the wild would roam over 50 square kilometres um, and its exercise uh, area when it's in a travelling circus is a few square metres, it was never going to work. And, you know, Wales jumped first and then we had changes in um, Scotland, Northern Ireland, England the last to move but we're not going to see wild animals in traveling circuses in the UK but as I say unfortunately in Germany and France in Spain these are still very common and some of these animals um, end up in the UK because they're being rescued um, we see that they have been declawed the mutilation of, 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 of circus uh, animals is also frequent they cut their claws off to make it safer of course when they're handling them they saw their teeth off and this instigates long-term health difficulties We'll return to tensions in the Middle East now, where Israel remains braced for an attack from Iran as the U.S. moves additional assets to the region. The White House said the threat of an imminent attack on Israel is real and viable. We can get a military perspective on this now. Our security and defense analyst, Professor Michael Clark, joins me. Um, in Joe Biden's words, Michael, a sooner 
rather than later is when he expects Iran to respond to that uh, attack on its consulate in Syria, which did happen on the 1st of April. It's a while ago now. Yes, I mean, 10, uh, 12, 13 days now. What are we on now, the 13th? Yeah. Um, so we're almost two weeks away, and uh, everyone's been waiting to see what the Iranians will do. They always, they, they always swear apocalyptic revenge, and usually they do less than they say, because the Iranians always go for low-risk things, and they know they can't afford a war in the Middle East, a major war, because their own regime is quite um, brittle. But they will want to be seen to respond, and everyone's thinking about what are they going to do. So it might be a, some sort of direct attack on Israel or Israeli interests in the region. It might be a direct attack on Americans. I mean, the Americans have got 40,000 troops in the whole region. Mm -hmm. They've got about 2,000 troops in um, uh, Iraq, about 1,000 troops in Syria. And so there's a lot of American vulnerability in the region. Mm -hmm. And the Americans are moving quite a lot of military stuff around as we speak, as they have been doing for the last 36 hours or so. So there's this sense in Washington that things are building up. The Iranians won't leave it much longer. The uh, Americans are briefing out to the press that it's within 24 hours or 36 hours. They're going to look fairly foolish if they turn out to be wrong. Mm. And I think the Iranians won't wait very much longer. So they have to be seen to do something. But we're guessing that the Iranian um, scope for action is probably narrowing because the Israelis have indicated that they will respond, the Americans have indicated that they will respond, and there's a lot of military tension across the region at the moment. <laughs> I'll run everything through. What I'll do is I'll just take um, the mic is hot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we've got the IP stuff. We'll run it through our Cool. 
Uh, everything's on. I'll just get them rolling. Two seconds. Yeah. by Assistant Commissioner Tony Cook. And I'll start from the top, just so I don't miss anything, um, just to clarify those details. About 3.30 this afternoon, a male with a knife entered the Westfield Shopping Centre at Bondi Junction and attacked a number of people. Police were called and a police officer responded and faced that man and neutralised the threat within that shopping centre. Other police attended and helped witnesses, shopkeepers and others that were in the shopping centre move on from the shopping centre. As a result, there were four female women deceased in the shopping centre and one male, and subsequently another female passed away in hospital, taking it to a total of six plus the death of the offender. There are uh, about eight people in hospitals around Sydney 
being treated for different injuries associated with being attacked in the hospital, uh, in, sorry, at the shopping centre, including a nine-month-old infant that is being, has been in surgery. Police have secured the crime scene, which you can imagine is expansive inside a very big, busy commercial shopping centre in Sydney. And the crime scene remains ongoing and it will remain ongoing for a number of days. The shopping centre will in fact be closed tomorrow for trade and Westfields will work with police to assist in the removal of vehicles etc from the shopping centre tomorrow. But in the meantime, the shopping centre will remain a crime scene. Later this evening, we come, became aware of who we believe the, the offender is. And we believe that he is a 40-year-old man. However, we are waiting to formally identify him and we cannot speculate yet on his identification. But let me assure you that we are confident that there is no ongoing risk and we are dealing with one person who is now deceased. Um, are there any questions? What do you know about this 40 year old man at this stage? Um, well, I actually will hand over to the Deputy Commissioner who's acting for investigations about, uh, we, we know a little bit about this person, but as I said, we're waiting to confirm his identification. Um, and if in fact it is the person that we believe it is, then we don't have fears for that person holding an ideation. In other words, that it's not a terrorism incident. Is that, is that person a um, he is known to law enforcement, um, but he's, we're waiting to identify him formally. Are you confident that if it is this man, this is not a, a terrorist event? We'll, as I said, the investigation will be ongoing for many, many days, but there are elements that we understand at this point in time that, that don't indicate that. But as we move into the investigation and Background, background, background. This of this um, person, his home, his vehicle, his associates. We will only know at that time. Do you if know it's his not, state um, of mind during the attack. No. Intoxicated. We don't know. If it, it's an, if um, it's, it's unlikely to be terrorism once the uh, this person is formally identified. Is there any any other early indications of what might have motivated them to do something like this? Not yet. And it's really, it will take a thorough investigation. It will take time for us to go back in his life and history to determine that. And was he, was he randomly, was it a, is, is the indication that it was a random spree or was it targeting certain people of gender or anything like that? Too, it's too early to speculate, but given um, given the environment, um, it does, it, it's possible that it's random, but it's it's too early to speculate. Is there any relationship between the attacker and any of the victims? Too early to say. How is the baby going? Uh, the last update I had that um, had been in surgery and it's too early to say really, but it's awful, awful. And uh, really, the other point I want to make is the police officer that attended is enormously courageous, as were other police officers that have attended that um, Bondi area. And I spoke to them this afternoon when they returned to the station. Uh, but also many of the shopkeepers and people within the shopping centre that showed amazing courage and bravery. So it, it was um, an awful situation and no doubt the people dealing with the trauma of what they witnessed, um, but it could have been much worse. How many of those victims' women, did that play a role at all in the murder? We don't know. How was that, oh, How was that police officer going? What did she say to you when you spoke to her? She's doing well under the circumstances. Um, as I said, she showed enormous courage and bravery and um, she will process obviously that. She's, she would need to be interviewed formally and so we just talked about that she's okay, her family's okay, she's got everything she needs for the time being and she will be formally interviewed tomorrow, no doubt.
Can you keep a little bit of on the uh, She must have been close by and was just the first officer on the scene. And it's unusual in jobs since you went in alone. That's quite unusual. Can you talk us through how that She's happened? a very senior officer, um, and it's not unusual for a senior officer to be out um, supervising and leading troops, and uh, so therefore she was on her own. Have witnesses told you anything about this man saying anything to the British shopping centre? Too early to say, and, and we will be providing regular updates over the next day and days. It will take us a significant time and investigation to work through this. It's a very complex crime scene. Obviously, seven people have died, six people have been tragically killed. It will take us a long time. Can you give us a little bit more insight into who this officer was? As a, as a person, obviously she acted very courageously, but, but who she was, her experience? As I said, she's a, she's a commissioned officer and inspector of police. So she's got seniority and experience as an operational officer. Do you have more details about the interaction between her and the offenders? Sorry? Do you have more details about the interaction? No. No, it, all of that will come out when the interviews are take, take place uh, and when the investigators review footage, and CCTV and all the evidence and, and piece it together. Commissioner, there reports you, that the woman who passed away in hospital was the mother of this nine-month-old baby. Are you able to... I've heard that same rumour, but I can't uh, confirm that, unfortunately. We've all seen the footage. It's you know, a place that most people who live in Sydney will have been at some point. So I think it really gets home. What's your message to the well, the community, like we do, should feel um, very sad about what's happened here, but they should have no concerns, ongoing concerns. We believe that this person acted alone, and there's no ongoing threat to the community. There was a lot of concern when this first happened. Can you talk us As I said, it's very early days, but there's no suggestion that there was any anyone targeted, but that could change, and we will only know that in time. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This officer uh, spelling out that, yes, it was a very senior New South Wales police officer who seemingly fired the shots, ending the attack by this man armed with a knife in the uh, Westfield Bondi Junction shopping centre. Uh, despite questions not committing to what the motivation was, other than there were early indications that it was not terrorism, although the police officer keen to uh, add the caveats that investigations have to take place fully to establish uh, what really happened. It also seemed that the man with the knife was known previously to law enforcement there. So key lines, uh, early to be, uh, to confirm this, but indications, the officer said, that this was not terror related, with that caveat that investigations will still take place to establish the motive. And the person was known previously to local law enforcement there. A reminder that six people have died after this knife attack at a shopping centre in Sydney, several more injured. And the apparent perpetrator was shot dead by a senior police officer who was first on the scene there. Let's uh, move to the Middle East now and another developing story uh, from Iran's state news agency uh, that has confirmed that uh, guards have seized a vessel that they say is linked to Israel. It's said to be the MSC Ares and reports say they have since moved it to Iranian waters. We can talk now to Jasmine El Gamal, political analyst and former Middle East advisor at the US Department of Defense. Jasmine, thanks for joining me on Sky News uh, today. Uh, and this ship being seized is against the backdrop of uh, tensions rising further uh, in the region following that, what we assume is an Israeli attack on the uh, consulate belonging to Iran. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 